to the House of Hidalgo show. My name is Rick Dehijo Binya. I am your host for this adventure. This is the 2018 season, episode 6 of the God and Wrestling Connection. Today is the 30th day of July 2018. And today we're going to be talking about the next step uh, on your journey to uh, correct capacity under Christ with less obligation and no interest of the United States whatsoever. That is according to the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. So, uh, today's episode is going to be titled New Capacity. Okay? Because we're going to, I'm going to show you the beginnings of a new capacity. Now, Last week we showed you a declaration that was for a mandatorily exception, a mandatory exception to the uh, to any reporting or uh, filing obligation. Okay, and that mandatory exception uh, had a form that was a de declaration that I uh, showed you how to put together. The template for it is over on my website, therockofsalem.org. So, therockofsalem.org. And if you look in the Acts and Resolutions, on the Acts and Resolutions page, Acts and Resolutions page, boy, if I can just get that out, um, then you look all the way down to the bottom of the page and you will see there's a link for that document. You can download it and make whatever changes that you would like to make to it. Uh, it's there for your use. This is not something that you're going to want to file anywhere uh, outside of your own house. It's for your use. If you remember, as an American, you were born free. You were born under no obligation. You chose your obligation by beginning to op operate in a certain capacity. The capacity that you chose to start operating in was probably a lot like me. I got a social security number. Well, actually, my parents did for me. But my social security number is what I've been operating in for many, many years. Until a few years ago when I decided that I was no longer going to operate under that capacity. That capacity is called a U.S. individual. A U.S. individual is actually a vessel. It's a vessel that's operating in a certain capacity. And that capacity compels upon it obligations to the United States. Why? Because it's a vessel of the United States. Very simple. Um, so I decided that I was going to operate a different way. And because of that, I went on a journey to find out how we could do that. Now, let me give you a little bit of a, of a background, a little history. You are along for this ride with me because I'm showing you how I'm organizing my uh, ministry of professional wrestling. That's why it's called the God and Wrestling Connection. And uh, so I want to show you the first thing I did uh, years ago was I incorporated a wrestling company. It was called TWA. And it was incorporated in the state of Florida. It was actually a Florida corporation. Trinity Wrestling America uh, held two shows in the state of Florida. And we were under obligation to, and we were compelled to follow the laws of the state of Florida. Because we did belong, we were an instrumentality of the state of Florida. Uh, which means that if we made a certain income threshold we were also obligated to file and uh, to report anything that we did make um, because of my uh, lack of understanding I operated in that for a little more than two years till I came to the reasonable uh, understanding that there was another way. There was a better way. I began to research the 501c3 responsibility of the church and realized that that is not the natural function of a church to be a 501c3. That it's taking on some liability by being one. 
and some responsibility by accepting that license. It actually is a licensing process to, to get certified to be a 501c3 uh, church. So we, uh, we dissolved the corporation and we sold the corporation uh, for valuable consideration, of course, to the church, Sovereign Love Free Church. Uh, Sovereign Love Free Church is the church that I am the pastor. I'm the founder and the pastor of Sovereign Love Free Church. And Sovereign Love Free Church uh, operated the ministry for a while and saw that it was advantageous to come underneath the house. So Sovereign Love Free Church uh, became a part of the house of Dehijo, which is my house. And we're going to get into that in just a moment. And underneath that Sovereign Love Free Church, which is now underneath the house of Dehijo, um, is a ministry called Dehijo Family Ministries. Now, Dehijo Family Ministries owns TWA. TWA has no number. It is just a instrument. It's just an instrumentality of the house of Dehijo through Dehijo Family Ministries. It is a web, and I'm going to show you that organization in just a moment. But I really wanted to uh, give you a little background information of why I made the change. I became compelled to observe the ways of the Lord. And when the ways of the Lord are compelled upon you, uh, you don't debate it. And you don't, you know, second guess it. You just start to operate. You start to walk in it. And it leads you into an understanding that you need to get out of the ways of the world. As I've said from the very first episode, there are only two ways. There's the ways of the world. There's the ways of the Lord. And if you're operating in one, you are not operating in the other. Very surely. So, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to go to the screenshot in just a moment here. And... You're going to see for yourself how I organize this thing and what method I utilize to organize it. So let's go to the screen. All right, here's the screenshot I'm using today, uh, Diagram Designer, because I'm going to draw some organizational charts for you here. And basically here's, here's how we're going to organize this. All right, I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna make the top a diamond, right? Because a diamond is the strongest. Well, it's not really the strongest, but it's very, very strong. Okay, one of the strongest minerals on earth. Okay, so we're gonna just, we're gonna start with this guy here, and I'm gonna call this your house. Oh boy. If I could just spell. Okay. I'm going to call this your house trust. Now, remember what we talked about trust. God designs trust. It was his His method. He's the, he's the testator of the trust, the grantor of the trust. And Jesus was his first trustee. And when Jesus went away to sit at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. And we are trustees as well. We are there to uh, to do the business of the trust. Well, in the same way, your house trust, okay, let's just say that your house name is uh, Johnson. That's a popular name, Johnson. So here's the Johnson Trust. That's the Johnson Family Trust. Now, um... The Johnson Family Trust, if it was a domestic trust, well, a domestic trust is under the jurisdiction of the United States. So we're not looking at a domestic trust, we're looking at forming a foreign trust. Why? Because we want something that's foreign to the United States in its capacity. Not that you're a foreigner. This isn't about being a foreigner or being a native uh, born person. This is about being 
foreign to the United States and to its interest. All right. So you have the Johnson Trust. Now you're going to find out later in another, uh, probably next week, that the Johnson Trust is going to end up being a 98 number. What does that mean? Well, it's an EIN number that you're going to get that's going to start with the number 98 and it's going to be an either uh, dash 6 or dash 7. Okay, that's going to be the Johnson Trust. Why? Because as I'll show you next week, only a 98 number is, is construed to be foreign. It's the only number that they issue that's foreign. And if it's a foreign trust, it's going to be in the six or seven million series. Okay, which means that the number immediately following the dash on an EIN is going to be a six or a seven. And I'll show you right in their own manual that it says that. <clears throat> okay, but here's the Johnson Trust. This is the Johnson Family Trust. This is organized by um, the head of the family. Usually, uh, we like to call it a patter. He's the paterfamilias of the family. He's the he's the head. He's the one who has the authority that God has given him to uh, bestow uh, common law and rule in the family. Okay, so you've got the Johnson Trust here, um, and you're going to want to call this trust whatever you want. It really doesn't matter what you call this trust. You don't have to name it after your family. You can call it anything you want. But what you're going to have to do is because it's a trust, you're going to have to name a trustee. Okay. Now, based on what we've learned, the trustee of the trust, okay, this trust, has a trustee. Well, what's the trustee's name going to be? Is it your old name? Is it going to be your old name? Or is it going to be your new name? Well, so the question is, what capacity do we want this trust to be organized with? And what are the rules uh, for the Internal Revenue Service to issue it in an EIN number that's uh, foreign? Well, one of the rules, as we'll see next week, is that the trustee must not be a U.S. person. So if the name that you've been using that's affiliated with the Social Security number is a U.S. individual, and you put that name here, do you think they're going to issue you a 9-8 number? Eh, no. Okay? So this is actually going to be your new name. So what's your new name? Well, this is something um, that I want you guys to observe. All right? I want you to observe that I've been using, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna type this one out here. Okay. Uh, right here. I'm gonna put it here. All right. I I want you to observe that I've been using Rick Dehijo. Binya. Now, so this is my new name. I don't know why that just came back up again. But there's Rick Tahijo Binya. That's my new name. All right. So why am I called Rick Tahijo Binya? Well, it's just the name that was selected when I was baptized. Um, actually, years later for me because we didn't know we were supposed to do this. But uh, this is the name that I was given. I was given the name Rick Tahijo Binya. Uh, what significance does it have? Well, Binya means son of Yah, son of God. Okay? And we are sons of God when we are saved and immersed and prepared for his, his work. We are sons of God. Okay? So, uh, so Rick is a name that I've always been nicknamed so it's very easy for me to have to use that name everybody knows me as Rick Tahijo is actually as I shared on one of the other videos 
the Hijo is a version of my actual surname, which is Hidalgo. Because Hidalgo in Spanish is broken down into Hijo de Algo, which means son of something. And what I did was, instead of saying Hijo de, I said de Hijo. So it's not son of, it's of son. So it's Rick of the Son, Son of God. So that's why that name is significant to me. But what you call yourself spiritually is your business. It's between you and God. It is your capacity that you're going to begin to operate in so that you can do the works of God without entanglement with the state. Right? With the world. Because there are two ways. The ways of the Lord the ways of the world all right so I'm gonna erase this so it doesn't get confusing all right I'm going to erase uh, which I'm not exactly sure oh there we go I got rid of it I'm gonna get rid of this new name here and I'm just going to put this just to make it a little bit easier I'm gonna put new name trust and that that'll remind us my goodness, if I could just operate the program. That will remind us now of what this is. This is a trust, a foreign trust with a new name. So it's a granting, it's a grantor's foreign trust. And it's for ecclesiastical purposes. So your new name trust. This is what you run your entire organization from. This is the top layer of your organization. Now you're never gonna use this number. This number is only significant for your organizational purposes. This is not something you're ever going to use in commerce. What you're going to do is, I told you before in, in an earlier episode, that you're going to want to park your old creature. Well, how do you pro how do you park it? Well, underneath here, we're going to create an estate. And a state number. And I can already tell you it's going to be an 83. It's going to be an 836. Because estates and trusts are all in the 6 or 7 million series. So that's what it's going to be. So you got a new name that's at the top of the organization. And then you've got an estate that you're going to create using this number. This number will become this this trust will become the overseer of this estate, which is just gonna be it's gonna be parked. Now, in order to create this estate, you've got to have a US individual number. You use that US individual number to create this estate and it parks it. It makes it so that that number is now consumed in this estate number. Alright? And then it, this number can now just be left out here, uh, you know, in the shipyard to be salvaged at a later time. Meanwhile, this 9A trust is going to create another number. Let's make a different shape here. Okay. And it's very interesting that it's called preparation <laughs> because it is actually in preparation for your ministry. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a family ministry. And since this is the family of Johnson, right, I'm going to say Johnson Family Ministries. Holy smokes. Okay. What in the world? Where did the A come from? Johnson Family Ministries, okay. Now, Johnson Family Ministries is going to be an instrumentality of your 9 trust. Okay, and it's also going to come out as an 83, but it won't be an 836. It'll be an 830 uh, or an 831 or an 832, something like that. It won't be a 6 or 7 because it's not a trust or a state. Okay, so let's fit this into the box. Okay, here we go. So, the new, the new 9 8 spiritual name trust is at the top 
The trustee is your spiritual capacity. It's still you, but it's you in the spirit. Okay? So it's not a U.S. person. It's a person under ecclesiastical authority. All right? So I'm going to draw in a couple arrows here so you guys can understand how this all connects. So this... This entity here creates this entity, and this entity uh, creates this entity. See, okay, so the 9 8 creates the estate. This is a parking zone, it's left out here all by itself. And this is the Johnson Family Ministries over here. This is your hub for everything you're gonna do you hear me everything you're gonna do Johnson Family Ministries is an umbrella for all the various ministries that you might be doing okay let me explain how that works let's use this shape here and I'm gonna put three of them here let's say you got three kids Three members of your house, um, you know, and even the, the the husband, the wife, whatever, if they want to operate in their own capacity under the Johnson Family Ministry umbrella, um, they can operate, you know, as another as another one. But Johnson Family Ministries, let's say you've got three kids. One of your kids' name is uh, is Fred. This is gonna get very Flintstone-y here for a second. You got Barney. Okay, and then you got you got Wilma here. Sorry, Betty. I'm leaving you out here. So, Johnson Family Ministries is the umbrella ministry component under the big trust, okay? Where everything is run through. The, this is the government of the whole thing right here. Okay, this guy up here is the governor of all of this. He governs it all. So, the Johnson Family Ministries, which is your hub, you're going to start operating from this side. This side just parks. You're not going to use it anymore. You're going to use this side. All right. It all connects. I'm going to just make connecting points here just to make it really obvious. Uh, even, if, even if we really don't need them. We're going to do it anyway. Pardon me a second while I finish this up. I got to, you know, my drawing has got to be right. Oh boy. There you go. All right. So, Johnson Family Ministries creates a ministry called Fred, Barney, and Wilma. Okay. Now, you can name these whatever you want. Johnson Family Ministries could end up being, could could uh, could basically create a ministry called uh, Fred Ministries, or maybe Barney doesn't like his name because he's you know he's short and can't bowl, so Barney says, hey you know I like to call mine uh, uh, Via de la Rosa Ministries. Okay, so Via De La Rosa Ministries is born, right? They create a ministry for Barney called Via De La Rosa Ministries. And this is how everybody in the family operates. They operate through these numbers. So this is how you would organize. Now, here's where the rubber hits the road. How do you enforce all of this, right? This whole structure as amazing as it is, right? I mean, all of this is like gone in an instant as soon as the government doesn't recognize it, correct? Okay. Well, I'm going to show you why this is totally valid. Because this is just one of many houses. And what's happened is this house has come into a union with other houses that have organized the same way. And they have, okay, don't, uh, 
You might want to sit down for this part because this is where it gets really exciting. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to make it kind of big cuz it's consuming a lot of families, right? Okay. So all these families, this is just one example, but all these families who have organized this way are going to come into this union over here. We're going to call it uh a union of sons of Yah. Uh, okay, I'm going to call it the Union of Sons of Yah. Now, let's say that there are, you know, just for the sake of just a straight number here, let's say there's 50 houses. 50 different houses come together and they they ratify this convention, this union, right? Now, this union, it exists because all of these different families, like this family above the Johnson family, have delegated certain authorities to this union to function or to... Uh, to contract, uh, they, they've contracted with this union to do certain things. Okay, so whatever these guys tell this entity to do, this entity is compelled to perform. So what this entity does, now we're operating way down here. This entity creates a council, whatever you want to call it. You could call it board of directors, you could call it governors. I don't care what you call it, this is what you could call it. They create a council. What's a good biblical number? Let's say that that council has, uh, you know, six people. 12 people, 24 people, whatever. It's up to you. You decide how many people are on that council. So each of the houses vote. They, they get to vote for members of the council. The council then are given delegated authorities to execute on behalf of all the houses. Now, this is enforceable. Why? It's enforceable because our Republican form of government recognizes that no law, Congress has, Congress can create no law concerning these ecclesiastical societies, religious societies, religious things, okay? They have no capacity. The United States has no capacity to uh, to rule over this. They can't. They can make no law over the establishment of of uh, these religious ecclesiastical organizations. Especially since this particular organization is not a 501c3. It's not compelled under any law to file, to report, anything. But it has within it flesh and blood human beings who are just as American as anybody else. And now the Constitution can literally be enforced. Because this is something I'm going to let out of the bag right now that not many people seem to realize. The only people in America who can enforce the Constitution are those who can stand above it. i got to say that again. The only people who can enforce the Constitution are those who stand above it. This is not my opinion. This is a fact. Okay? We the people, the ratifiers of the Constitution, were what kind of people? And not only, and, 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 and 
the evidence of what kind of people they were is in how they ordered their reservation of rights. They ordered the constitutional government to protect certain rights. And what was the first one that they listed that they actually ratified, okay? It, it was originally in, in, in 1787, it was the third article of the Bill of Rights. But the first two got absorbed into the Constitution before they ever ratified it. And so, therefore, it became uh, the first article of the Bill of Rights, the first amendment to the Constitution. And what did it amend? It amended the congressional powers. It amended the ability for Congress to make law concerning the establishment of religion. And the first one that they reserved and ordered the government to protect was, which one? Congress shall make no law. Okay, Estab uh, regarding the establishment of religion. I don't know if that's a, a, a verbatim, but I don't really want to. Uh, I don't really want to uh, change my screen, so I'm kind of in a pickle here. I have to go off of my memory. Uh, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to type in First Amendment into my Google, my handheld here. And here, I'm going to read it verbatim. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. And the question is, what kind of people have free speech? What kind of people have free press? What kind of people have uh, can petition the government for redress of grievances? It is is it a it is is excuse me, blah, blah. is it a grievance that the United States only allows those operating in a U.S. individual capacity to do uh, to set up banking and to do commerce? Is it a grievance? Absolutely. Well, who has the right to bring forth a petition of grievance? Is there a higher authority that has a right to bring forth such a petition than the church? A purely established church that is not affiliated, that has no interest in the United States whatsoever, that the United States has given no benefit or special privilege to? Huh? Is there? There is no higher authority. Period. Zero. Even from a biblical perspective, what higher authority is there than a clean church with clean hands and clean feet? There is none. So, I've gone long enough on this program, but I wanted to show you how an organization would look. And next week, we're going to focus on this 9-8 uh, organization right here. And I am going to show you how that 98 organization can be uh, created. And that's something I can actually help you with. So God bless you guys. I hope you have a great week. I hope this was a show that you will uh, appreciate. I hope that you understand it. And I hope you pass it on to those who deserve to hear it.